Welcome back to chapter seven. This is the second part. And in this part, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at using those balanced chemical equations to calculate mole relationships and mass relationships. So the coefficients specify the relative amounts of how many moles or molecules we're using. All right, and, you can, and, and it's both. So you can talk about it's two, two molecules or you can talk about it's two moles. It just depends on what you're doing with it. Most of the time when we're looking at balanced chemical equations, we're gonna be looking at the moles and they are reacting in these molar ratios. So if my balanced chemical equation is two, 25, 16, and 18, then they are reacting in a two to 25 to 16 to 18 ratio. So for every two moles of the C8H18, I'm gonna produce 18 moles of water and I'm gonna produce 16 moles of CO2. So it tells me in an ideal world what that ratio and proportion is gonna be. And it's just like if you think about making a pizza. <clears throat> a lot of us don't make pizzas at home anymore because it's too easy to buy one. But uh, we used to get Chef Boyardee and we'd have, we'd make a crust. We'd have about five ounces of the tomato sauce, two cups of cheese, and then together those would form one pizza. And so the relationship is one crust to five ounces of sauce to two cups of cheese is one pizza. And so if we look at that, we, if we had six cups of cheese, okay, then, and I, and I need two cups of cheese and everything else I had plenty of, then the six cups of cheese times one pizza over two cups, because that's what's required, I could make three pizzas with that as long as I had plenty of everything else. And so that's exactly how the chemical equations are. This is stoichiometry, that two moles of that of octane plus 25 moles of oxygen is gonna give me 16 moles of CO2 and 18 moles of water. I know that because I balanced that, okay? So this is what we call the stoichiometric ratio. And the stoichiometric ratio, reactant to product, product to product, reactant to reactant. You can do it all of those different ways. Okay, so, and, and you can look at it and it's always gonna react in that proportion. So this, if you remember, I talked about the molehill a little bit, but we just focused on this side, right? Remember, the big important thing to remember is you cannot go under the molehill. You must go over the old mill, molehill. And what this means is, if I have grams of something, I can get to moles of that. Now, if it's in a reaction, I have something called a molar ratio where I can go directly from moles of one thing to moles of something else, and then I can actually calculate how many grams of something I would produce. I cannot go directly through there because I can't go under the molehill. I've got to convert to moles first and then I can convert, convert to atoms or grams or whatever I want. So when I set this up, if I say, for example, I have this particular um, set up here that we've been looking at, this octane reaction, and, and I tell you, you've got 22 moles of octane. Well, I know for every two moles of octane, I can make 16 moles of CO2. So how many moles of CO2 can I make? Well, 22 moles of octane times the conversion of 16 moles of CO2 over two moles of octane, because this is the ratio between those two, I can calculate how many moles of CO2. So if I have 22 moles of octane, I can make 176 moles of carbon dioxide. So this is how we're using the stoichiometric ratio from the balanced chemical equation in order to do these stoichiometric calculations. So in this problem, this is that same um, octane problem we've been doing. It says determine the mass of CO2 produced when 3.6 times 10 to the 15 grams, you have that much. Now, 
we're going to be able eventually to get there, okay? Because if we know the moles, then we can go to grams. So if I have 3.6 times 10 to the 15 grams of C8H18, and I know what the molar mass of octane is, then um, let's so so we can do that. Remember, so that's eight times twelve, and hydrogen is going to be eighteen. Oops, eighteen times one, ninety-six four, one fourteen. So 114 grams per mole of octane. So remember that. So I've got 114 grams of octane for every one mole of octane. Then the, this step right here is what you've got to remember. What is the molar ratio? Because we're trying to figure out CO2, right? So what's the molar ratio between moles of CO2 so we've got 16 moles of CO2 for every 2 moles of octane. Right? So I got rid of grams of octane, moles of octane. Now I have moles of CO2. See how that works? So I could go, I could know how much of one thing I have, and then I can convert that by using the molar ratio into grams of something else. So then I just have to know I'm doing CO2. So C is 1 times 12 is 12. And oxygen is 2 times 16 is 32. So that's 44 grams per mole of CO2. So 44 grams of CO2 in one mole of CO2, so that cancels, and that's going to leave me with grams of CO2, and then all I have to do is put that in my handy dandy calculator, 3.6 EE15 times 16 times 44 equals, divided by parentheses, 114 times 2 so that should give me 1.11 times 10 to the 16 grams of CO2. So that allows me to go from the mass of one thing to the mass of the other using the molar ratio. If it was just telling me moles, I wouldn't have had to do the conversion with the formula weights. That's the extra step when you're going from mass to mass. All right, so in this one, it's you're converting, the plant is converting carbon dioxide to um, glucose. All right, and so you have 37.8, and so you can put these in whether they're products or whatever. 37.8 grams of CO2 in one week, and that you got plenty of water and plenty of sunshine, and so it wants to know what mass of glucose could you make. All right, so we've got 37.8 grams of CO2. Right, so I know grams of CO2 is going to go on the bottom. I know I've got to go up the mole hill. I've got to go to moles. So I've got to get to moles of CO2 and then convert to moles of glucose. So there are, we just did this one, right? There's 44 grams of CO2 in one mole because it's 12 plus um, 32. Then to go from moles of CO2 to moles of glucose, I use the molar ratio from the balanced chemical equation. So this is CO2 right here. So the six moles of CO2 goes on the bottom. And I'm looking at glucose. So it, for every six moles of CO2, I make one mole of glucose. And then if I want to know what the mass of glucose is, 
then I've got to do C equals 6 times 12, H equals 1 times 12, I'm sorry, 6, yeah, 1 times 12, O is 6 times 16. All right, you can do that math. I happen to know it's 180 grams per mole. Okay, so 180 grams per mole, so there's 180 grams of glucose in one mole of glucose. Make sure everything's canceled. And that's going to give me grams of glucose. And that gives me 25.8 grams. So again, make sure you can put this in your calculator and get the correct answer. If you have to put me on hold, that's okay. All right, I, I do this one just because this one takes it a little bit further. Um, so this one is talking about a real world kind of situation where you have SO2 um, and it's talking about kilograms, okay? so. If I have 25 kilograms of SO2, I can go ahead and up front if I want to say, okay, there's a thousand grams in one kilogram. So that means I have 25,000 grams of SO2. And I have plenty of everything else. So the only difference is that I had to convert the kilograms to grams. So I start with my 25,000 grams of SO2. All right. The other thing I probably need to know is what is what is the formula weight of SO2? And if you look all, everything up, you're going to see that that's 64 grams per mole. And it's asking me how much uh, what mass of sulfuric acid I'm going to make. So I know I'm going to have to know the formula weight of that. So the formula weight of the sulfuric acid is 98 grams. I just went ahead and did it up front because I knew I was going to have to do it here in a minute. All right, so I'm starting with what I can hold in my hand, okay, which is that. Then I'm going to convert that to moles, so grams of SO2. And I said that there are... 64 grams in one mole of SO2. So see why I did this in grams? So if I did it up front, I didn't have to do it the times a thousand and all that stuff in my calculation because I want to make sure if this is in grams, then whatever I'm starting with is also in grams. Otherwise, I could be off by a thousand. All right, and then the next step, remember, is critical. I'm going to get rid of moles of SO2 by doing the mole ratio of two moles of SO2 for two moles of H2SO4, because that's what I'm trying to figure out. And then I can then I get rid of moles of sulfuric. And I know that it's 98 grams. And everything cancels that I want to cancel. And I'm left with grams of H2SO4. And so the answer you should get is 38 because it's only two significant figures. Remember, you don't worry about significant figures in your conversion factors. They have an infinite number. So the only thing we can go by is how many significant figures are in that measurement. And that was 25 kilograms. And then you have a practice. And there you go. That is using a balanced chemical equation in a stoichiometric calculation. Big words.